Hola gringas y gringos. Welcome to Gringas R Us. Expats with a plan. This week, we're going to take you on a little bit of tour of San Gil and Hacienda Jalindo, which was a step back in time coming up next. I'm Mark. And this is Margie. Hello, Margie. Hello. Margie is our traveling Gringos or Us mascot, so named by Laura Barton. Thank you, Laura Barton. <laughs> Salud. So let's talk a little bit about this trip. Let me give you some background information. This is kind of like one of those things that I put together because of where and who. So, I want to say around 2006, going into 2007, I was a member of the Genesis fan club, Genesis the band. And when I say that, I mean all eras, including Peter Gabriel, Phil Collins, etc. Steve Hackett, give him a shout out. That's right, God Steve knows Hackett. It. Everybody else cuts him out of the video. God, you know that's the truth. Want Steve Hackett. Anyway, <laughs> don't let Tony Banks know. Anyway, Tony who? So, so um, I was in the fan club. And in the fan club was this gentleman named Juanjo. And Juanjo is from the Carretero area. Okay? So we've known each other for that long. 15, 16 years now. And we had never met in person. But we had always interacted online. And when the Genesis fan club went away and most of us kind of migrated, we tried MySpace for a while and that didn't work out. We ended up with Facebook and we have stayed friends ever since. Well, I can't tell you how excited he was when he found out that our first place we were landing was going to be in Carretero. So we absolutely had to meet up. And I have to tell you, uh, it was such a pleasure. Well, then we... we when we finally arrived in Carretero, uh -huh. he was actually in the States. He was. I mean, it was just yeah, sort yeah. of the timing was. But we got it We got it together. I mean, we were absolutely going to meet up before we left Carretero, no doubt. There was never a doubt. So he invited us out to this incredible hacienda. It's a hotel and spa um, destination that's out near San Gil. San Gil is a huge golf complex uh, residential community and um, about 30 minutes south of Carretero so mm -hmm. it was an easy drive for us right and I never even heard of Hacienda Jalindo never heard of it no and, and then when we got to Jalindo we still didn't know of it yeah it took us a while to find it <laughs> yikes but, but he suggested it um, and he invited us out to dinner no I'm not even going to say invited us out he treated us to dinner. Yes. We went to this Italian restaurant in Hacienda Jalindo. There are various restaurants to choose from, and this was the one he well, suggested. Well, before you even get to the restaurant, once we finally found the place, mm -hmm. and you want to talk cobblestone? This was look, cobblestone. Look, this place is old school. It is a Hacienda like, and in the truest sense seriously. of the word. Like, I, I don't wanna I don't wanna go into a bad place with these, but I think of things like um if you were, if you ever watch the movie Scarface and Pacino goes down to meet the big drug Tony king, Montana goes down to Colombia to yes, meet and he's on this man's estate and it's just expensive and the they house could've... and how can I trust this organization? You tell me, Tony. Frank is smart. You know? You can blame him for that animal. They could yeah. have filmed that in this hacienda. This, this hacienda was, it, it just took me back in time.
father's estate and it retains those characteristics. Every it, bit of. There is uh, this huge, no, two, two huge courtyards. Yes. One leading to another. Um, you, you kind of look like on the outside, you're like, oh, this is really pretty kind of architecture. Well, actually, three courtyards. Let's you have the outside, you have um, the outside one, then you stepped in through the gateway, then you came yeah. into the second one, and then you walked through another gate uh, archway, and you came into the third one mm. with, that had the pool mm -hmm. and all of the, um, a couple of the restaurants. It is stunning. Yes. There is a chapel right on site. vineyard on the site. Small vineyard, small vineyard, but very, very quaint. Um, you know, it's kind of like one of those things where you walk around in a lot of towns and you're like, oh, this is kind of pretty, but it's not like overwhelmingly exciting on the outside. And then, mm. and then you walk inside and you're like, oh, what? <laughs> this, this is, this is breathtaking. It, it really is breathtaking. And it's lovely on the outside too, but it's even prettier inside. I mean, it's jaw dropping. I mean, it's modest. That's the word I'm looking for. Okay. It is a hacienda. It's modest on the outside. And then you step inside and you are just blown away. And you feel like you've gone back in time. Oh, yeah. I can see where if you are in that area, that is the place to get married. Oh, that's an event center place. No yeah. doubt. I mean, it, it, no it, doubt. The, the beauty of it, the. The photo ops that are just throughout the gardens, and they're just—it's the timeless. It's the trees. What? Well, how old did they say those trees were? Two hundred year old trees, or something like that. I mean, it's 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 amazing. It's amazing. And, and we were sort of glad that we got there a little early because it gave us time to walk mm -hmm. around and and be gringos and look around and go. Uh, ooh, what, ooh, uh, 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 ooh, uh. And then, and then, <laughs> then we realized that, well, we screwed up. Yeah. We didn't pack a go bag. And guess who told us why we should have been doing this? Um, as soon as I explained <laughs> that to my mom, she went, "Well, do you think you might want to pack a go bag from now on, just so that uh, if you find yourself in this predicament again, mm -hmm. that you can take advantage of it, because we would have loved to have spent the night there. Yeah, we would have stayed the night, no doubt. Oh. I mean, it, it was just, I mean, I, I would not have had needed to get into the pool. I mean, I just would, would want to walk around. I was afraid to step into certain areas because they were specifically for guests, and we weren't hotel guests. We were just there to have dinner. I so, think what we're trying to say is, if you're in the Corretro area, oh yeah, treat yourself. Take take the time, go down there, and spend at least one night. You you, you will you will kick yourself if you don't, because oh, yeah. I know we are. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we definitely should have been. I mean, if we're ever back in that area, I think we will intentionally plan a night or weekend just at the hacienda. Yes, for real. Yes. And and you know what? As far as prices go in Mexico, it's expensive. I mean, I think it's almost two hundred dollars a night. That's expensive for Mexico. But it is a pittance for what you will yeah. be able to experience in yeah. history. I mean, it's just gorgeous. It's it's just wow. It's stunning. It, so, it's, and as you've seen from the video clips, you'll notice that it's just it is mind blowing to, it really to, is. to step there and go, wow. This is strong. The lovely thing about this is that my friend Juanjo, 
he goes there just about every weekend for dinner. So he was very familiar with the place. Um, I noticed all the waiters knew his name. I mean, everybody, every everybody knows him. Hola. Hola. So he and his wife and his lovely daughter, oh my gosh. Boy, was she cute as a button. Of course, she's four years old and she's shy with strangers. But I promise you, by the end of the evening, I she was, was not shy. I was la reina and she was la princesa. <laughs> for real. But uh, they had a play area for children. And they took her over to the play area. And then Juan Ho and his lovely wife sat and had dinner with us. Well, um, lunch. Yeah, that's dinner to yeah. me. It's not supper. It's a late lunch. Two, two, yeah. It was 3, 3.30, roughly. Yeah. And uh, I, I had... I wanted to say my eyes are bigger than my stomach, and that does not translate well into Spanish. I can't remember exactly what it is, but basically... Uh, I know llena means full, but that's not what I was saying. I wanted to say my eyes were bigger than my stomach, and I tried to say it, and it made no sense. Mis ojos está yeah. mejor de mi estómago. Yeah, but 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 it it doesn't translate well because they don't really say that here. But basically, what happened was is we ordered a pizza that the two of us would share, and I kind of asked Juan Ho if it was big enough for two, three people. And he said, oh, it's good for two. Okay. Oh, well, it was like a six to eight slice pizza. Of course, it was a Hawaiian pizza. <laughs> I love how in Mexico you can find Hawaiian pizza everywhere. everywhere. Love it. So, yeah, we got a Hawaiian pizza. It was actually um, cooked in a fire oven right there at the front of the restaurant. You can see it. But I was like, oh, pizza. Hey, we should get a couple of appetizers. And I'm kind of thinking every, again, I do this. I think everybody at the table is going to eat these appetizers, right? So I order us beef carpaccio. And I ordered the caprice uh, salad. Caprice salad. And, of course, it comes out. And nobody's eaten any of it. He has some of the carpaccio because it's meat. And I have some of the caprice salad because it's cheese. <laughs> And it had these really big slices, you'll see in the pictures, these really big slices of things that I was like, I don't know what this is, but it's good. They're called watermelon radishes. I don't like radishes. I think they're too spicy or hot or something weird about them. These were good. They were very good. And so, what is that? So you could say it was a mild radish. It is very mild, very kind of sweet. Um, they had balsamic and everything there for the uh, caprese salad. And, and for the bread. Oh, the bread. Oh, of the, the bread. bread. They had the, the pesto and the balsamic yes. and yes. the olive oil and so good. mix those three together. And, and they would come around. Oh. They would come. They didn't just bring a bread basket and drop it like a lot of restaurants would do. They came around a la carte and allowed you to choose from two different types of bread. And when you needed more bread, they came around and brought you more bread. Um, and they had that the didn't tradition. help us finish the pizza either. No, but no. I, we ended up having to pack it up and take it back home with us. But it was delicious. Yes. And when we go to pay, of course, what happens? Juan Ho pays for the whole thing. No, he did allow <laughs> us to pay the tip. We paid the tip. So thank you, Juan Ho. Yes. <laughs> so much. So then we follow the family back to their home in San Hill. Well, I tried to. Well, we did. He made it. Yeah, there were a couple of times I was like, I think he's in that vehicle way <laughs> up there. Yeah, we're, we're so used to driving so slow because we're so cautious. But we, we got there. We got to San here. And uh, I wasn't aware. I knew there was golf courses. And when he would mention to me that that's where he lived, I just thought, oh, he must golf. He must like to go there. No, it's a residential area. No, he plays tennis. He plays and tennis. And they have tennis courts there as well. And we're driving through this amazing neighborhood. And I just, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like every house matches, and yet they don't. They are all architecturally unique in yes. their style. They're all white. But they're all white with terracotta roofs. Yep. Other than that, each one is even, unique. Even the modern, there's, there's traditional and there's modern. I think the modern ones didn't have the terracotta roofs, but they still had the same exterior 
uh, texture. Well, and some, and some actually had the, the terrazas on the roof. Yes, I mean, so, but, but everything matched. You could tell that it was a um, homogenous. Yeah, it was, it's, it's beautiful and it's, I don't, I don't know, it's like a jewel. I would say it's like a jewel in the desert is what it felt like. And we're wa he decides that he's going to take us on a tour of the neighborhood and we are just, I don't know. Blown away. Blown away. Yeah. Uh, we did find out that he kept, I almost feel like he was trying to tell us, hey, buy a piece of land here because he kept pointing out these lots that were for sale. We found out that one lot in this place was 180000 US dollars for the lot. You ain't put a brick down yet. It's one hundred eighty thousand dollars. It's not an inexpensive place to live, but I got to tell you, it really was gorgeous. It well, really was gorgeous. And, and Juan Ho's house sits on the lake. He's on a man-made lake. And I'm going to show you these videos. Amazing. His little girl goes out and she starts calling. Patos, the, patos. Calling the ducks. And the ducks come. They're all the way across the lake and they start paddling. Just like. And I'm like. I'm like. Did these dumbasses forget they know how to fly? They get there a whole lot faster. But no, they all, they all paddle their way across the and lake. And she's waiting and she's calling for them. Oh. Look at them. Okay, we're here. They don't know you. They don't know you. Who are these guys? Las alas arriba. Oh, wow. Look at them. Oh, they're running. <laughs> yeah. And Juanjo brought out some feed and he had a trough. Probably where you would dock a boat if he had a boat, but he doesn't have a boat. So he fills the trough with this seed. And all these ducks come up out of the water. No, all the white ducks come out of the water. The blacks, uh, the black ducks. The also. little black ducks are, are migratory ducks. He doesn't like them. <laughs> but the white ones come up and start eating the seed. And I've seen him post uh, videos and clips after we visited where his little girl is actually hand feeding the ducks. Like they know her and they know that when she's nearby, they're getting fed. They're getting fed. <laughs> the fish. Oh, yeah, there were really big fish in this. I mean, there were some, we're talking. We couldn't tell what kind they were. If they were like. They carp, look like a carp. Like a carp. Which a carp size. Sense. I mean, they're a good sized Very fish. Big. I'm getting closer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. Quan Ho's house is just stunning. It's beautiful. It has that, that brick, I can't think of the name right now, but that brick um, ceiling. He has unique pieces of furniture that were made out of doors that I think came from his grandfather's yes. house. His grandfather's house. So we're talking a really old house that had the really big doors. And he, I mean, really big yes. doors. And he had them made into lovely uh, tabletops, glassed tabletops, um, beautiful, stunning furniture. Well, he is an engineer. Yeah. 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 And it showed. And he did a very nice job. And we he, spent the evening. And then, then he also is an independent record producer for progressive for rock progressive Mexican music. rock. So. If it, we get back to the how we met situation, we both love Genesis, and he is particularly enamored. Pro, I'm gonna I'm gonna say the early Peter Gabriel era of Genesis predominantly. I would say uh, because that's where you have the most progressive 
a little less pop and a lot more prog. And Juan Ho is a huge prog rock fan. That evening, as we had taquitos and popcorn and I was being crowned La Reina, we were listening to prog music that I have never heard before. He just named band after band and would put the music on. And it, it well, he was he was Mexican, then he was French, wow. then he was some other country. But all the different bands. Now, I think I think one was Brazil. Ah, uh, yes. I think or was it Argentina? I. I don't it doesn't know. matter. The music was excellent, and he introduced me to a whole lot more bands. I was just putting them into my Spotify list. I was like, dang, this is good stuff. And that brings us back to Juanjo speaks impeccable English. Yes. Impeccable. And why does he speak English so well? Because he learned English so he could understand the lyrics to the songs that he liked. Yep. He's that hardcore of a music fan that he learned English so he could understand the words to the music. I think that's amazing. And he was really gracious. He and his wife both were very gracious in teaching me um, some of the customs that I wasn't aware of and maybe got a little bit wrong. For well, exist the, for the, they were the, the, the prime example was we were using the wrong term for spicy. We were saying it was caliente wrong. and wrong. It's picante. Yeah, spicy is picante. Caliente is hot. Hot weather. Temperature-wise. And one of the other things that I did wrong, and I was just trying to be... Look, I have experience being in France, and I know that when you do la bise, when you, cre when you greet someone and you do la bise, it's both cheeks, right? Not in Mexico. One cheek. You kiss one cheek. I was doing both. I kind of threw her off. And that's when they told me that that's yes. not the custom in Mexico. <laughs> but they were very gracious and teaching us uh, a little more refinement. In, and God knows we need it. Oh, we need the refinement. If I'm a rocker, dude, through and through, here's my favorite bands. ACDC, Van Halen, not Van Hagar, Skinner. So much. <laughs> but we had such an incredible, enjoyable time visiting both Hacienda Lindo and San Gil. Yes. Very much grateful to my friend Juanjo. And gracias. now my friend Juanjo. Es gracias, amigo. Si. And, and our, my precious little friend. <laughs> La princesa. <laughs> La princesa. Yes, and her pamiento. <laughs> she was such fun. If you're getting entertainment or value from our videos, we kindly ask that you please subscribe and help our viewership grow. And don't forget to share with your friends, leave the comments, and... Ring that bell. That way you're notified when all new content is dropped. And that's it for San Gil and Hacienda Lindo. We appreciate you being here and spending your time with us. Thank you very much. It means a lot to us. We wouldn't quite be the same to borrow a phrase from the country collectors who are now about to leave Mexico. Oh, mm. hate that. Anxious to see where they're going to go. But, you know, it wouldn't be the same without all of you being along with us. So, yep. we appreciate you taking the time to do it. And Margie says goodbye as well. <laughs> Remember, we are. Gringos are us. Expats with a plan. We are doing it. You, you can, can too. too. Hasta la próxima vez. Adios.